you and Nini in Greece at the winery. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Say the line. Uh, say the line. I don't. I can't say the it's line. It's been so hard. I don't want to shut up. True. It's been really hard without you. I was so lost without <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> We had such a good day at the winery. It, it was, was fun. Really we were fun. all talking about doing a business. Yes. And this and that. And it was it was like old times. So I'm like, this is a good feeling. I'm buzzed. I'm sure she's buzzed. Let let me go ahead and grab it her was real like, quick. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> and see if I can have this conversation with her. Now, granted, being tipsy <laughs> in this group and having a serious conversation can definitely go left. <laughs> However, oh, I was just praying please. and I felt like we could probably have a real yeah. heart to heart. Actually, Portia kind of pulled me aside a little bit. So when we were getting ready to leave and she asked me if I would stay back for a few minutes so we could talk, so. Actually, when she said, would you stay back? I was kind of like, no, I want to stay She didn't want to stay back. I'm like, go <laughs> and talk to her. <laughs> she thought it was I just said that, yeah, I don't know. I just thought <clears throat> it was going to be something. So I was sort of like, nah, that's OK. I'm going to just got to go get on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it actually ended up being a great conversation. We both apologized to each other, which made me feel really good because I always, as I said earlier, I felt like it wasn't a one-way thing. And so she apologized and I apologized. So oh, that really sweet. worked, you know, for me at least. I was happy to hear her say she apologized and I wasn't the only one saying it. So it made me feel like she was taking some responsibility too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you and I miss you so much. Thank you. I miss you so much, Nini. Thank you. As soon as she said, I apologize, I felt oh it. Oh my gosh. Because she was it was like that. real. Oh, yeah, as I soon as she that. said it, I felt it. And I didn't need her to say anything else. Yeah. Now, I did let her say more, and okay. she did want to say more because we needed to really fix it before we moved all the way on. So, but yeah, I was, I was, I was glad that I took that opportunity. She was that like, was oh my sweet. gosh, your, your, your lashes are dirty. I was like, girl, stop. She was like, let's take them off. I oh, took right out, she took hers off. That was sweet. <laughs> like, what the, who cares? Your <laughs> lashes are dirty. <laughs> they are dirty. I had them off for three days. <laughs> no, they were off. You didn't notice when we got back to the bus? Both I mean, maybe, like, I just don't remember. Girl, we both look like frogs. We had lost all our glam. We had cried on each other, everything. Yeah, we had a lot was, to drink. Like and the, the Academy Award goes to. <laughs> <laughs> we got receipts, girl. What are you doing over there? We'll never show those receipts. Mm. No, never. Yeah. But it's just like. But there are receipts. Like. <laughs> you was the main one who didn't want nobody to make up with her. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? And you like, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? What show are we watching? What? Huh? <laughs> Well, I don't think, think they would have made they it They literally have... lived around the corner from each other and never spoke or see each other unless we're together. Like literally, walk, I can walk to your house yes, and like I never Shrek. talk to you or yeah. see you, ever. Yeah, She's like, down the street, so in my mind, it's like, damn. Yeah. I know what Nini's support feels like. I, I went through my first divorce and Nini was right there for me. I mean, we were at up front crying in the bathroom together. So it's like, yeah, I, I missed her being yeah. a part of my support system. And I too missed being a part of hers. I think we were able to start to rekindle. We're not all the way there yet, but we, we began something. Where, where are you in, in Portia at this point? and y'all's relationship. Because no. I know that you guys, you know, were friends and I really did my best in Greece to make it clear to Portia, regardless of whatever I have ridden for her. you guys have been through, you definitely ride for her. And I know you valued her friendship. I definitely and valued I really her tried to make that clear. Uh, where, where are you guys now? Um, we're not. My issue with Portia, straight up and down, is that What's good for the goose is not good for the gander. She started our feud to begin with by being messy. 
about the Kenya situation. I just thought it was a little odd that Eva didn't bring her kids because she know about the Kenya's energy. I've never been, been negative to that girl my whole life. You know, of course you could take your kids where you want. The only reason I was asking where her kids were in the first place is because I had imagined a costume for her kids. <laughs> so I was like, why didn't you bring them? Because I was trying to see what you were going to put little Mikey in. That's the only reason I asked her. It's not like I was doing anything super shady. When she said to me, oh, the kids are at school, I was like, ah, 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 that doesn't make sense. I thought you were going to bring in little boy. I was scared. I, you know, these little group events sometimes can get crazy. And I it's a wanted... kid group event. And then she said, well, to be honest with you, the last couple times I've been around Kenya, you know, it's been kind of funky. And so <laughs> when I talked to Kenya, of course, that means you didn't like her energy, right? Meanwhile, I didn't even realize that Cynthia was the one standing there using the word energy. You know, you want to make sure the energy's right. So that's, I just, it went, because it fit. That's the reason why Cynthia said energy. Because you're basically saying you don't know about Kenya's energy and that's why you didn't want to bring your kids. So when I talked to Kenya in natural housewife fashion, I'm going to repeat it and say that I felt like that was odd that she didn't bring her kids. So she went too far and was super messy and I respond to her being super messy. Portia told her that you basically said that you didn't bring your kids to the party because you didn't know about Kenya's energy. Portia just had a baby. And I tiptoed around her whole little feelings. Come on now, bitch, if you want me to go off. Portia, she got enough bullshit going on Look. in her life and she can converse about that. She needs some business. Right, and I can forward her a lot of these vlogs so she can mind that business. Portia might want to stay all the way up out of my business. She still got her C-section healing. She over here worried about somebody else's baby. When Candy first told me, I didn't believe it. I yeah. put no weight on it whatsoever. And I told Candy at that very moment, I will, I'll ask her when we get to Canada. You are the main one out of all of these girls who said, girl, I got you. I will never let nobody say nothing about your personal life. For you to go on a rant and just be like, is she even heal from her C-section scarlet. You know, a matter of fact, let me bring up the blogs. Why not bring up the blogs on Dennis? For me to hear that you threw that shit in the air as a friend, it hurt. I'm not gonna lie, it, that, that shit really did hurt well, me. I wanna respond to it because that was definitely not what I said. Even came to me after the fact and was like, how dare you? You know, don't, don't come at me like that. You know I have your back always. I'm a part of your village. I had already told Eva, I get if you were upset. Of course, fine, vent. But for you to talk about my baby, talk about my fiance at the time, all that, it was like, oh, you're doing too much. Like, you went way deep. Um, and I just didn't feel she needed to do all that. It was when I watched it, like, girl, you mad like that? I mean, she said it like she hated me, like, oh, her, huh, huh. Like, she was talking about an enemy, someone she had never even been friends with. Who are you to dictate how I respond to how right. you hit me? Do you get why she's so upset, though? The, what? What are we upset about? The fact that I said you had a C-section, you, you did. You told the world. You went on Instagram and told the entire world about your C-section. So for me to say, hold on, shouldn't she be healing from a C-section versus being messy as shit about me? I'm sorry, where's the lie? Where is the lie? She said stuff about Dennis, uh, forward to the blogs, which she knew had been hurtful to him and her husband is his attorney. So it was just like, girl, you are wrong on all levels. Then she's like, oh, PJ looks like Dennis with a ball. But my thing is, I know my daughter looks like her dad, but you're trying to say it in the same tone as cursing me out. So that means you're saying it within a negative way. So bitch, don't bring up my child. That's when I was like, okay, girl, I'm done with you. I am, I really don't have anything else to say to you. And at the end of the day, when it came to Portia and Dennis, the girls in this group know Eva Marcel Sterling wanted mm -hmm. nothing negative to do with that. Yeah. I wouldn't talk about it. I wouldn't bring it up. It was like pulling teeth when it came to get me to say anything, right. even to comment about it. So for it to then be turned around as if I'm over here just dragging her with the lack of respect for her and her situation and him, I'm like, look. Was I pissed off? I was extremely pissed off because someone that I thought was my friend creating a whole issue over here. And I'm like, why yeah. would you do that? I'm pregnant. I'm supposed to be your friend and you're being messy. So I went off and I was upset. No question about it. Now, my intention behind my venting was not to hurt Portia's feelings or create some new drama or do blog shit or none of that. It was me venting. Cynthia, is, is this the next project for you? Oh, um, hmm. Getting these Eva two together? and Portia back together? <laughs> no. Well, I, I'll take 
even Porsche before I take Nene and Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Is it fair to say the charity event didn't go as planned? It was a huge success. Right. Everyone had a great time and it was, it was just an, a beautiful, beautiful event, I have to say. And I have to take the credit for that because a lot of it was my doing. Listen, I've thrown some of the most fabulous parties Atlanta has ever seen, honey. We are not going to forget my forever fabulous and forever relevant party, season five. I mean, come on, what was more fabulous than that? Like, I know how to throw a party. I know how to make things look grand. I know that that is a lane that I really do well in. And so I wanted to take the lead, but he also wanted to take the lead, and you can only have one quarterback. I probably have a step and repeat here. It's gotta be right when you first come in. The stage has to be here. Get the plugs, so it makes sense. I think you have your tables here, bam, bam, bam. Not too close to the bathroom. The food shouldn't be close to the bathroom. It'll be tight for That's 100. like about, that's 50 people versus 100 people. And Seats, you know the that. tables can't be near the bathroom, so everything has to be on this side. I think that Mark likes to be a boss, and he is a boss in his own right. So he's used to taking the lead on business things. But I'm his partner, and he needs to understand that when you have a partner, you consult with your partner, you do things together instead of racing ahead and basically pretending or treating me like I'm a work buddy <laughs> um, versus a partner. So I let him take the lead, but eventually it circled back around to him really needing my help to pull it off. Mm. Yeah. I was trying to step in at the last minute to take care of some of the fires, but had I been involved from the beginning and really had the reins from the beginning, it could have been like out of this world. Do you feel like Mark was was respectful enough to you through this process? Do you feel like he was? Respect? What's that? What? Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. um, I think that when you want to take the lead on everything, I don't think that you respect many things <laughs> that other people have to bring to the table, including myself. Um, no, I think that I should have been treated in a way that honored the gifts that I have, that I could have blessed him with for the event. And I just don't think it ended up like that. How do you like to step every week? It's fine. It's fine. Let's just step it. I'm a, I'm a hostess, I don't know why I can't move around. How are you enjoying the ride? I hate it. Me. No, I hate it. Everybody knows that. I just felt like all night there was tension. I just didn't, didn't think he was very warm to me. He never thanked me in front of the crowd. It was just a lot going on, but I kept my head up and a smile on my face to represent our family well. It just wasn't a pleasant evening and it just did not end well. And I just think at that point we were just very tired of the back and forth and um, just the stress of our relationship and where we were. Is Mark happy? Mm -hmm. I don't know where he went to. Yes. Like, yes. It's like... It's invasive. Tell them that's it, they, they can't film forever. Tell them they gotta wrap it. Got it, got it. Don't tell I'm, me I got it. I'm giving you five minutes and then I'm gonna take care of it. If I come back down here, it's not it's gonna be ugly. I don't give a F. End it. So never gonna see me again after this event. But um, I'm just happy that the event turned out to be what he wanted. Do you think that Mark knew he was going to file for divorce the next day while you were at this party? I don't think so. I, I couldn't tell you what Mark was planning on doing right after the event. All I can tell you is he was not in a good mood at the event and he seemed really agitated. Just fine. I'm a, I'm a hostess, I don't know why I can't move around. How are you enjoying the ride? I hate it. No, I hate it. Everybody knows that. I kind of knew that, you know, she, you know, there were things that, you know, concerned her about the relationship. And, but I was surprised that day because it, everything seemed to go so well with the event. I just wasn't expecting them to leave having an argument. Right. Right. 
Basic. Someone that said they, they can't film forever. If I come back down here, it's not it's gonna be ugly. I don't give a F. End it. That um, was shocking to me. And um, I definitely didn't think that it was gonna be so bad that they had to separate. When we were leaving the charity event, remember all the couples got together and we all took this group picture mm -hmm. and then we all went our separate ways. The next morning, out of nowhere, on the blogs, it hits that Mark filed for divorce or right. something like that, and then Kenya responds. And I'm I, that's when I called you. Right. Because I definitely didn't want to call her. I could only imagine how many calls she was getting. And I called you like, please tell me this is right. a lie. No, I was completely shocked when I actually read it on the blogs as well. She didn't before. tell you? Nope. I read it on the blogs first, and then I spoke to her. I know this is hard. I know you guys were having some issues. I know you've shared a lot with both Candy and I, but I did not. I mean, I had no idea that it was, well, I didn't know anything about the statements until I read them. Well, he kind of, like, forced my hand with that. Can you share with me after the event? that when they were preparing to leave, that he was kind of going back and forth with production and someone was trying to, you know, ask Kenya for a picture. He didn't like that. And then that kind of prompted an argument. And then they argued in the Uber on the way home. And then, you know, things just kind of got crazy in the Uber. I've seen him angry before. I've never seen him angry like that, where we're that close to each other. Mm -hmm. The Uber driver asked him to get out of the car. The Uber kicked him out of the car, Kenya. He asked him to leave because he, started. It was that crazy? He was very, it, it got really out of hand. Um, I just, I just felt like they, that was a major decision for them to just go from, we had a argument to now we announcing divorce. Right. Like it I felt like, my choice to I know it wasn't yeah, your choice. So. We talked about that. Yeah. Um, it wasn't her choice, but you know, he made announcements or she made announcements and I just felt like they, they jumped the gun. I felt like mm -hmm. maybe if you have this argument or whatever cool and off. then you cool off, yeah. then you could come back, you know, more with a clear right. mind and maybe talk things through. Now, obviously a big transition happened. You guys were working together, but then it sounds like it kind of blew up. What happened? What can you tell me about the, and you know, I get it. If, there's only so much you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. But what, so far as you feel comfortable, what, what, what happened there? What was the transition? Um, I just think when people argue, um, I argue about what's, what I'm actually feeling. My husband doesn't necessarily do that. He might be arguing with you about a pair of socks, but we already know you're not really mad about socks. You're mad about something else. So um, He's indirect about it. He's indirect about what he's angry about. Let's go back to the charity event. Um, there was a couple of things I really didn't appreciate that night about the charity event. Like, you know, at the end of the day, whatever issues Kenny and I go through, mm -hmm. she's my girl. She's my girl, and I know how invested and how much she loves her family. Yeah. That night, I guess I was paying even more attention than I would normally because Mike was hosting. And one of the things that I noticed that Mark didn't do was he didn't thank Kenya for helping him with the event, which I know she did. Kenya's the reason we were all there. Well, we didn't know Mark, we knew Kenya. Your soon-to-be husband kind of prompted him, remember that? Yeah. Again, thank you guys for all uh, attending. One more time for your kings. And I know the black man's lab, they don't let women in or whatever, but we want to acknowledge our queens out there as well. <laughs> Thank your wife, acknowledge your wife, and say, you know, he gives up and gives, you know, he stands up and gives a speech, and he does not even acknowledge Kenya. I know how involved she was. Right. And right. making sure that he had an amazing event. And I just, you don't think that it was didn't just sit well with an me. accident. And I'm just saying, he's not super duper outgoing from like the communication standpoint. Again, thank you guys for all uh, attending. So maybe like, yeah, he should have thanked his wife, but. I receive what you're saying, but you know. And Mark ain't my friend, I'm just, you Look, know. I receive what you're saying, Eva, but I just feel like 
I'm not saying that he intentionally set out to not acknowledge right. her or thank her. I just thought it was just really in poor taste that he did. And I must say, the event when it came to like Kenya and Mark, they weren't like the perfect couple, right? But I don't to say the least think that I had any like suspicion that it was what it was. And so I just thought, No, you know, no, I've seen all sides to Mark. I've seen Mark where he's just been amazing, where I'm like, I get it. I know why you're in love with this man. I know why you married this man. And then I've seen other sides where I'm just like, I don't get it. Like, he's not that nice. Like, even from the beginning, you know, we were the first ones there because Literally. Mike was hosting it. Mike was driving me crazy, like, we gotta be there. I wanna make sure I'm on time. I don't wanna disappoint Mark. I wanna make sure I have all my information. I wanna make sure I do a good job. And I was yeah, like, yeah. all right, all right, okay, okay. And then we get there, we're like, hey, we're here. And Mark pretty much, I mean, didn't even speak to us for the first, like, 20 minutes or so. And we're like, hi. Before we got there? Yeah, like, he just was kind of like, seemed like he was in a bad mood or agitated or whatever. Like, his energy was off. So, so you got us. You kind of smelled the smoke before everybody. He didn't seem else. like he was in a good mood that night. Like well, he's I just, heard he was mad that I ate early. Well, that did come up, which was another asshole thing. Like you're a pregnant woman, you're about to have the baby on the floor well, right now. So we're gonna get you a little chair so you can sit down because you're big and pregnant right now, and we're gonna get you a piece of bread Thank because you. it's gonna get you through. And here's some water as well until we start the whole event. Because I feel That's bad what people do. after the fact when they were like, yo, Mark was really irritated that you ate. No, but that makes no sense. In hindsight, obviously there was some, some problems going on again. We never really knew all the things that was really going on in that relationship. Because pretty much all hell broke loose the next day. The next day. Well, the night day. of the event after the event, some things happened. And that's so, why, I, I mean, I heard that there was some stuff after the event and like he was kicking out production. And no, it was, like this. it was, it was bad. At the time, during my surprise proposal from Mike, when Kenya came up to me and was like, hey, I think Mike's gonna propose tonight. Uh, first of all, I didn't know he was, so I just kind of was like, you know, in Bailey Wine Cellar launch mode and just kind of like, okay, whatever. I didn't really, you know, think much of it. I'm telling you, I feel like he might propose tonight. <gasps> no, you don't think he's gonna do it tonight. Like, I don't think he's gonna do it tonight. I wasn't even thinking about that. We're like I'm totally telling focused you, on the one, so. my, my stomach has butterflies. I just was like baffled when you you came up and was like, ooh, I got something mm. to tell y'all. I could not believe she was that mad, but she, yes, she was that. Well, because to me, first of all, I love surprises. I'm a person who loves surprises, okay? And it's hard to surprise me, so I feel like I if too. you put in the effort to, you know, try to surprise me, I hate when people ruin it, ruin it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I cannot stand that. So, mm -hmm. I was like, really? Really? Because I hit you with the text before. That you, I was like, why would you say that to her? I, I feel like if she hadn't been telling everybody every second, it would have been a different situation. Do you really think that she was surprised? Because this is a woman who has talked about getting proposed to every single day, posting pictures on Instagram about wedding dresses and picking out the cake flavor all before she has gotten actually engaged. And telling us every single day, oh, it's coming, any day, any day, any day. Do you really think you can surprise somebody like that? Well, listen, I don't know, but they definitely could be surprised after you sat there and said, I think he's about to do it today. Yes, but Cynthia and I had conversations that made me believe that too. So it, was, it wasn't just that Even time. still. Even no, still. it doesn't matter. You're right. It, even still, you're right. So it was just a lot going on that I didn't know about. But after kind of watching everything play out and Candy, pretty much me watching Candy tell her this is going to happen, then at that point I was like, okay, now that was a little sh Kenya knows good and well if Mark was trying to surprise her with anything, I would never come up to her and tell her. I mean, what was she doing, giving me a heads up? It couldn't have been a heads up, I was already at the place. I still regret doing it. Okay. I do regret doing it because had it been spoiled, you can never get that moment back. Right. Exactly. You can never get that moment back. Mark seems to really like you. 
Oh, Lord, yes, Jesus. He even at the bowling alley, he was like, no, I love Nini. Nini and I are in a good place. Isn't that right, Kenya? Or Ken, or whatever he calls her. So I want you guys both there. Um, Kenya agrees. I agree. <laughs> Ooh, I was like, who team Same. are you on? Kenya, how did you feel when your husband said that he has nothing against Nini? I had a problem with the fact that he is always <laughs> kissing Nini's ass mm -hmm. from meeting her once or twice and she introduced Greg to him. So somehow that made him feel so good and so important that he like is riding for her. Nini was nice to me the first time I met all of you. She showed me the ultimate respect. So I don't have a problem with the woman. The woman's very nice. I do want him to be a part of the event. It's for a cause and it's bigger than any, you know, petty stuff. And I'm like, but what about me? I'm your wife. You need to write for me. If someone mistreats me, they mistreat you. We are a family. We're one. And so I don't understand why if I'm constantly telling you this woman is evil to me, she's talked about our unborn child, she has said and done nasty things, why do you like her? Mark seemed like he's a nice guy. You know, I don't know what it is to be in a relationship with him because that's always different. No, you mean you don't know what it's like to be in a relationship with Kenya. Well, I'm sure with her and with him, you know? You know, that's a You situation. just, you know, a person could be really nice but you don't know how they operate in a relationship. You know? We should have knew something was wrong there though with their relationship <laughs> then. <laughs> That was just, ugh. They are true. That's a, ugh. At this point, I remember you talking about him needing to become assimilated into Atlanta mm -hmm. society. Do you think it had anything to do with that? Nene is not the person in the group that's most connected in Atlanta. Candy is, and it's not because she's sitting right there. <laughs> okay? Seriously, she is not the socialite. No one wants to invite her to any party. She's loud and obnoxious, and she treats her fans horribly. So no one's clamoring to get at Nene to invite them to things in Atlanta. Candy is the only one that I would have to say, if you want to meet the elite of Atlanta, you would need to buddy up to Candy. I mean, she's friends with the mayor. I mean, come on. Well, I mean, I guess Tay is <laughs> out and about a lot now, too. She now, okay, we're talking about, th because of the show. Because right. prior to that, you never saw Tanya anywhere. We didn't know who Tanya was. We didn't know who Paul was. Now she suddenly is a socialite because of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Thank you very much, Candy. Then, as a, <laughs> as a, I want to get a little bit further. What? We don't have a lot of time. Where's the lie?